Hi, this is Miss Liz from Finkelstein Memorial Library Youth Services Department here with a book talk on young adult YA nonfiction books. I've got five books for you. The first book is called One Earth, People of Color Protecting Our Planet by Anuradha Rao. The author who has worked in the environmental field since the 1990s lives in Vancouver, British Columbia. Look for people of color and indigenous people who are environmental defenders and found quite a lot of them. She chose 20 people who are black, indigenous, and people of color to focus on, and their biographies are featured in this book, One Earth. Their individual stories introduce readers to diverse activists from all around the world of all ages and ethnicities. From Nana Furman, an Indonesian urban designer and Muslim outreach coordinator who helps plant mangrove trees to save the coastline, to Rue Mapp, an African-American woman from California, who is founder and CEO of Outdoor Afro, who organizes outside group activities like hiking and snowboarding. These environmental heroes are celebrated by the author, who is also a biologist. She outlines how they went from being kids who cared about the environment to community leaders in their field. One Earth is full of environmental role models waiting to be found. The next book, which is quite a heavy topic, is called No More Excuses, Dismantling Rape Culture by Amber Kaiser. This is a hard book to read because of its topic and it was hard for me to read as well as the book opens with a graphic account of a rape on a college campus in Steubenville, Ohio. But the main takeaway is that though it was a clear-cut case and the attack was even filmed and put on the internet, the victim was blamed. This is something that constantly happens and must stop. In late 2017, the Me Too movement went viral, opening up an explosive conversation about rape culture around the globe. In the US, someone is sexually assaulted every 98 seconds mostly women and gender non-conforming people. More than 320,000 Americans over the age of 12 are sexually assaulted each year. Men are victims too. One in 33 American men will be sexually assaulted or raped in this lifetime. Yet only 3% of rapists ever serve time in jail. In this book, we learn about the patriarchal constructs that support rape culture and how to dismantle them. Additionally, the book addresses violence against women and gender nonconforming people, redefining healthy manhood and sexuality, believing victims, improving social and legal systems and workplace environments, evaluating media with a critical eye and standing up to speak out. On a lighter note, our third book is called Cast Away, Poems for Our Time by Naomi Shihab Nye. From the poem, Don't Mess with Texas, on a highway sign, really, what about these energy bottles pitched by someone who didn't have energy to find a bin? Fun finger food wrappers dropped by someone not so fun, empty envelopes, scattered at outside post office. Pepper packets from a sad lunch where two people broke up. In this collection of 84 original and never before published poems, acclaimed poet and young people's poet laureate and devoted trash picker-upper, Naomi Shihab Nye shines a spotlight on the things we cast away. From plastic water bottles to those less fortunate, this is a deeply moving, sometimes funny, and provocative poetry collection. Even if you are not into poetry, I highly recommend this accessible, thought-provoking book of poems. Our fourth book is called You Call This Democracy? How to Fix Government and Deliver Power to the People by Elizabeth Roosh. America is the greatest democracy in the world, isn't it? The author examines some of the more problematic aspects of our government, but more importantly, offers ways for young people to fix them. The political landscape has never been so tumultuous. Issues with the Electoral College, gerrymandering, 
voter suppression and a lack of representation in the polls and in our leadership have led to Americans of all ages asking, how did we get here? The power to change lies with the, vi the citizens of this great country, especially teens. Rather than pointing fingers at people and political parties, you call this democracy looks at flaws in the system and offers a real way out of the mess we are in. Each chapter breaks down a different problem plaguing American democracy, exploring how it's undemocratic, offering possible solutions with examples of real life teens who have already started working toward them and suggesting ways to affect change starting now. Our last but not least fifth book is called The Great Nijinsky, God of Dance by Lynn Curley. Dance prodigy, sex symbol, gay pioneer, cultural icon, Vaslav Nijinsky rose to fame as the star of the Ballet Russe, the Russian ballet, in Paris, before mental illness stole his career and the last 30 years of his life. With one grand leap off the stage at the 1909 premiere of the Ballet Russe inaugural season, Nijinsky became an overnight sensation and the century's first superstar. Perhaps the greatest dancer of the 20th century, Nijinsky captured audiences with his sheer animal magnetism and incredible skill. He was also half of the most famous and openly gay couple of the Edwardian era, his relationship with Sergei Diag Diagliev, artist, director, and architect of the Ballet Russe, pushed boundaries in a time when homosexuality and bisexuality were rarely discussed. Nijinsky's life was tumultuous. After marrying a female fan he hardly knew, he was kicked out of the Ballet Russe and placed under house arrest during World War I. Unable to work as he once did, his mental health deteriorated and he spent three decades in and out of institutions. With photos of lush paintings done by the author, this book not only well describes Nijinsky's life in modern terms, but how groundbreaking the Ballet Russe was with his avant-garde costumes, discordant yet stunning music by new composers Stravinsky, Rimsky-Korsakov, and others, and how much of an influence the opera styles had on people at the time. I highly recommend this excellent biography about a famous person you probably have not heard of, but might enjoy. So those are my five books. I hope you check them out at the library. We have these and many others, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye.